Hey everyone, I'm Jack, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys what my pro unicycle setup looks like as an expert unicyclist of 10 plus years. In this video, you guys will be finding out how much a unicycle like this cost and why I decided to choose the parts I did. Not to mention this setup might be one of the most unique and weirdest setups out there and you're about to find out why. So in the comments on my social medias, this has been a pretty popular request, so I'm listening guys, and let's get right into it. Starting out from the top of the unicycle and heading on down to the bottom, first off, we got the saddle. And this here is the Exceed Carbon Fiber Saddle. This is probably the most expensive part on the unicycle that I have right now. Traditional plastic bases just break a lot quicker and they eventually snap. And after a while, these bases kind of add up and it ends up being cheaper in the long run to just get yourself a nice carbon fiber saddle. So I chose the Exceed carbon fiber saddle over the other carbon fiber saddles in the market because it has a more flatter profile as opposed to the other ones out there that have more of like, kind of like a banana or curved shape to them. This is really just personal preference. I find that they snap flip tricks a lot harder and I just find my spins a lot more comfortable on flatter saddles. Now connecting the saddle to the frame and the rest of the unicycle we got the seat post. Now the seat post I use is the Mad For One XXL seat post. Now seat posts are probably one of the most common parts to break on a unicycle and it is so annoying when they do break because they can be kind of expensive after a while and sometimes you just break them so damn quick. I'm a little bit of a weight weenie, but when it comes to the seat post, I want that convenience of knowing that my posts are gonna last. So I kind of go with this beefier post and so far it's worked really well. I also sanded this thing down too. It's usually all, uh, all black, but I took a sander and I just kind of scraped it down so that it's this sort of shiny silver color. Now we got my seat clamp. This is like a really odd sized seat clamp. It's the 30 millimeter diameter Surly steel clamp. Now the only reason I got this clamp is because it's one of the few clamps that is the right size to fit on my custom frame, which I'm gonna get to next. Basically this clamp is fused right to my frame though. I don't know if it's just because it's been there for so long or maybe it's rusted. Feels permanent, I can't get it off at all. It still tightens up and holds the post in place, so I guess that's all that matters to me. It's just a permanent fixture on my unicycle. Now, I originally said that the carbon fiber saddle was the most expensive part on my unicycle, but I kind of lied because in today's value, this next part would actually be worth a lot more than when I bought it. This is possibly one of the most unique and interesting parts of my setup and basically my, my prized possession. I cherish this part and I love it so much. And here we have my custom 22 inch steel Flansberium frame made by the one and only Jacob Flansberry. This was a custom 22 inch frame that I made a few years ago for my 22 inch setup. 22 inch is kind of like an odd size in uh, unicycling and BMX, so it's really weird that I'm riding it in the first place. This frame is made from 4130 chromoly steel, so it is a really strong and stiff frame that, from what I understand, is probably gonna last me a lifetime. This frame is a little on the heavier side because it's made of such a steel, but it just, it just looks so damn badass. <laughs> so I have it on my unicycle, on my 20 inch unicycle right now. I also got a deal from Jacob because it was kind of a prototype frame. It was the first steel crown frame he was making for urban unicycling. And it was also the first time he was experimenting with these grooves. So I got a little bit of a discount there at the time. And also too, back then, the cost for the materials was a lot cheaper than it was today. Uh, steel for making these kind of frames is a lot more expensive. Therefore, this frame would cost like double what I paid for at the time. Now for possibly the most important part of this video, that part is the like button and the comment section down below. Like I say in all my videos, hitting the like button and commenting down below really helps the YouTube algorithm and really helps me out as a content creator. So I really appreciate it when you guys do that. And as a reward, here's a picture of a kitten. So, going from the frame, we now got the tire. And this is the 20 inch Eclat Mirage tire at 
2.45 inches wide. This is possibly one of my most favorite 20 inch tires I've ever rode. Usually when you get really light tires, they're usually like really flimsy or they have these weak kind of sidewalls here and it bends and flex a lot or the tires wear through really quick. But with this tire, it, it maintains its weight while just being really sturdy and lasting long. I haven't rode a tire like this before for 20 inch. I'm also huge for saving rotational weight in my wheel sets. I think this is the most important place to save weight because it just really helps in urban unicycling for flips and spins as opposed to saving weight in your frame or your cranks or your saddle. When looking for the best strength to weight ratio in a tire, I have found the Mirage tire here by Eclat to be the best. I almost never swap this out for any other tires on my 20 inch setup. And to accompany the tire, we got the 20 inch Nimbus Dominator 2 rim. I was pretty lucky to get this part just because they're usually out of stock and they're kind of hard to find. This rim is probably one of the widest 20 inch rims you could find on the market. The Nimbus Dominator 2 20 inch rim is 42 millimeters wide. Now this extra width for rims is really nice for absorbing impacts and it also minimizes your chances of getting pinch flats. With wider rims you generally get wider inflated tire diameters which also just feels a lot more comfortable for unicycling because you're hopping around a lot and you kind of want to spread that weight out. This rim is also touted as being a super strong rim for street riding and that's another reason why I chose it and so far it's been great. Now for the most secret and hidden part of my unicycle, let's look under the hood at the tube. Now you're gonna be surprised with this one because you always think that, oh, there's just one type of tube. You got the normal rubber tubes that you'd buy at your bike store. Well, there's another type of tube and that is the Tubalito tube, this orange looking thing. <laughs> These tubes are made from some sort of plastic uh, as opposed to the normal butyl rubber that other tubes are made from. Now they're a little more expensive, they're about 50 bucks a piece, but for the amount of weight I'm saving and for the amount of strength that I'm actually gaining, uh, I think it's well worth it. And now for one of the most overlooked parts of the unicycle, and possibly one of the most overlooked parts of any BMX or bike in general, the spokes. So I kind of went out on a limb and experimented with this because nobody has ever tried a double butted spoke before. But right now I am currently riding the Sapim double butted race spokes. Basically what this means is that the spokes are normal width at the ends of the spoke where spokes are most likely to break and in the middle of the spokes they're thinner. This saves weight and also gives you a more flexible wheel set. Some people have said that double butted spokes can even make your wheel set stronger because there is a little bit of that give and it's not as stiff. Uh, a lot of other people say that this just makes your wheel set more weak and more likely to break the rim. I'm here to say that from my experience personally and in my riding, these spokes have held up amazing. <laughs> I find I have to do more maintenance on my unicycle because they come loose a lot easier, but I think because they're less stiff, there's less tension on the ends of the spokes, and like I said, I haven't broken any of these spokes yet, and I've given it a lot of abuse. All I have to do is make sure I do my maintenance every once in a while and tighten up all my spokes really quick. Other than that, these have been awesome, and they've also saved me some rotational weight. That sweet, sweet rotational weight. These spokes are attached to a pretty standard hub, and the hub I got on right now is your standard Nimbus 36 hole hub. Nothing crazy here, it's your pretty much run of the mill hub, they're pretty easy to find. There's not a whole lot of options for hubs, so I just kind of picked one to be honest. And now for possibly everybody's favorite part, we have the cranks. And these cranks are the super rare, super lovable, very much admired. Chris Holm moment cranks. These cranks are a little on the shorter side, but I personally like them that way. They're 110 millimeters in length, although most people ride 125 to 135 millimeter cranks for urban unicycling. I like these shorter cranks because they're just more flowy and they can be a little bit harder to land, but I just like to ride smooth, so that's why I'm riding them at such a small length. The cranks are also a little beefy and a little thick. 
Uh, I've never seen anybody snap this crank before. It's just known to be really strong and it provides a pretty decent platform to stand on for your feet. I've never had trouble doing rolls on them and I personally like them for rolls because they flange out and they're kind of thick which gives you a nice surface area to stand on when you're doing a lot of those flatland roll tricks. And that's why I'm riding the Chris Holm Moment Cranks and that's why until these things break or wear down at the splines where they usually wear down over time, uh, I will just be riding these for as long as I can. So the total for all these parts is probably somewhere around $1,100. But that's also not including the shipping and the import taxes that I had to pay to get these. So that number is probably a lot higher. You don't really need to spend this much to have a decent unicycle or to do the kind of things that I do. Really, if you have 400 bucks or more, you can buy yourself a unicycle that'll be capable of doing all these tricks and handling the abuse that you want to give it. These are just very customized parts that I've ordered for my specific preferences that I've built up over the years. Welp, that's the current setup that I ride right now. Thanks for watching everyone, and I hope to see you in next week's video. Peace.